All right, got a freezer here that's not running. It was supposedly running this morning and the heaters don't feel like they're on. So it seems like it's stuck in defrost. I've got the clock marked. We're gonna see what it's doing. And then we also have a cooler. The cooler here, same scenario. It uh, It's running at least, but it's not cooling. Uh, it's about 45 in here. So we gotta go up and see what it's doing on the roof. All right, the clock's marked. We're gonna give that a little bit of time, see if it's moving. Okay, just got done checking voltage. You can see we got one leg of power there, so it's not it's not getting uh, power. Okay, that fuse is blown. Mm, that one there might be blown too. So we've got two fuses that are jacked. Let's go up the top here, see if we got it coming in. 75 volts, that don't sound too promising. There's 208. 117, so we got some problems coming into this thing. So we've got it coming in to there, comes up to this unbelievable mess. And that one there, and the other legs back here. I assume this is over here, but none of it's labeled. It appears this one's it says comps something can't read it the bottom one there that's green was replaced once before not the other ones so all three should have been replaced i'm going to assume if we kill it again and go over here and see if this one's dead it'll tell us whether that's it which it's dead it appears that's powering multiple different ones okay what we've done We've taken one of the fuses out of there since the other two are blown. Put it over here for now. I don't want to waste good brand new fuses if there's a short. We'll get that back on. 208. 208. 208. Okay, we're flashing a little bit in the sight glass. It just went solid now. So that headmaster is opening and closing. So we're going to see if we got any shorts on our compressor. Going from the ground, we've got dead short. Each leg's got something bad going on. Great. Compressor shorted the ground. Wonderful. All right, one other thing we found out, this is the walking cooler power also. So when the freezer shorted out, it ended up taking out the cooler, which they were complaining the cooler wasn't working. So the cooler still needed a little bit more refrigerant. Um, we made a leak repair yesterday and uh, we just needed to add a little bit more to it. Uh, it got colder today than it was yesterday. So we've got that uh, back on and we've got our power for our freezer off. We're gonna replace the compressor tomorrow. And poof, just like that, a new compressor just appears. We're pulling a vac down on it. We're getting down there where we need to be at. We'll see whether it holds. I went ahead and put an oversized HH dryer in here to catch anything that might have got into the system. Didn't smell any uh, burn smell or anything like that, so we went ahead and added that as an extra precaution. We got the new belly band heater on there. Made sure we wrapped everything. When we was brazing it in, you can toast these uh, little indicator dots there on the uh, sight glasses so you gotta make sure you don't get those too hot same thing with your valves here wrapped up with a little bit of the uh, almighty hot block doesn't seem to do a bad job especially when it's this cold wet rag doesn't do real great if you watched my one video on my little tools and stuff that I built I said I was going to build me another one of those compressor pullers I made this one out of stainless steel so it's never gonna rust and it'll look nice and pretty. So went ahead and welded that thing up with a MIG machine. And uh, my gas wasn't quite right, so my welds there didn't uh, want to buzz right. So I just had to grind those down. I had, uh, you really need a tri-mix when you're doing it. And then I stamped my name in there. So if anybody decides to borrow it, this definitely is a one of a kind thing. Fits right on there. Just like that. I'm gonna put probably a hook there so I can hook it when I bring it up to the roof next time. Uh, I did just uh, get me an electric uh, hoist, 120 volt for my ladder crane. 
so I'm not going to be doing it with that drill no more and uh, I should have probably used it today this even though it's small it's a little heavier than what you think when you're trying to pull it straight up with a thin rope okay, here goes our blank off test she luckily is slowing down top right corner there is our leak rate just leftover uh, moisture or refrigerant so we're gonna go ahead and let it pull vacuum for a little bit longer and then we're gonna get this thing recharged she's down to about a half a micron a second of 700 so I'm gonna say we're good got the official date there on both items like I said I did go with an HH oversized dryer 163 it was an 083 in there before we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, disconnect turned back on, get this uh, sucked in for the remainder of it. Outdoor temperature out here is probably about 20 some degrees. We've got a 180 degree head pressure control valve. We're gonna make sure that that low pressure control there is kicking out like it's supposed to. Um, not sure you know, exactly what it was that took the compressor out, but not gonna take any chances, so we're gonna make sure that uh, everything's working the way it should. And that's not good, my gauge blanked out on the suction side. Uh, oh, that's lovely. See what's going on there? I'd say my test is are taking a dump. That's nice. Side glass is full, head pressure's really low. Because my valve's off, there we go. That looks a little better. Although the condenser is new, the uh, piping over to the evaporator, which is quite a distance away, which is probably a good hmm, 40, 45 feet away. Switch the probe there to the high side and it's reading temperature. So, I don't know, maybe my gauge is taking a dump. Alright, I absolutely hate these 550s, but they are my backups. And that's what they are, is a backup. So, we got the 180 for the head. 19 on suction, 59 degree superheat. Uh, gonna go down there and see if it's feeding correctly. There's quite a long run. I don't know if we're picking up quite a bit of heat from the uh, above the ceiling area, which is very possible. It's running back at 43 degrees. So at this point, subcooling's a little bit up there. Eight degrees, it's quite a bit. So we're gonna make sure this thing pumps down. Uh, double check defrost heaters and all that make sure that's all working. All right, I'm gonna leave you here I'm gonna go down there and kick on the defroster All right, everything was running down there like it should have been but it appears to be holding there. That's a good thing It's not really getting down there super low. All right checking our defrost heaters here We've got 7.8, and uh, this uh, unit on the roof, the maximum fuse size for it is 25 amps. The cooler up there is 15, so it's a 30 amp circuit feeding both of them. I would have preferred not to be all on one circuit like it is, but that's how they actually had it wired before. This is the old rack of refrigeration that they had before. It was a water-cooled condenser system. That's all been discontinued, and uh, all this has been all unhooked. We have our 30 amp FRN fuses in there. It's labeled so people can find it. Put a little bit of tape on there so you don't rip your hand up. Cooler got down to five degrees. And she's in defrost just like we talked about a little bit ago. And our coil's all nice and clear. The uh, meat and stuff, hard as a rock. So it uh, held really good. Wouldn't have been no good reason to do it that night, uh, not with it already at pretty well temperature. Okay, kick her out of defrost. This has got DC amps on it, so it's zero there. 
yeah it's just the fans 1.1 amps and then the rest of it's powered from the uh, disconnect up on the roof set our clock as close as we can there's one o'clock area Let's see what our amp draw is on the compressor it's pulling eight amps the heavier one here is the unit 7.4 so we're good to go good to go there all right we adjusted that differential just a touch our kick-in's been good all of these years so we're gonna leave that alone everything's uh, marked tagged tight sight glass is full we're at five degree box temperature and uh, the contactor still looked like brand new. There was no arcing or anything on it. Headmaster control is working good. Everything checks out electrically, and uh, that pretty well wraps everything up. I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch the video. If you would, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.